Hello. Well, uh, today I'm going to start uh, working on what I call the coal mine scene here. Um, I've got uh, see a flood loader in the corner there. Uh, it's not going to stay there. It's going to go in a different spot. But uh, I'll be working on this area here. I still have a still have a bunch to do elsewhere in the river scene. Details to add, and uh, of course on the interchange scene. Um, Actually, in all my scenes, I have a bunch of details to add and things to fix, but uh, just to give myself a break from uh, working on the river scene, I don't burn out, and just uh, do something a little bit different, uh, I'll be working on that. And since uh, these two scenes kind of blend together, I'm going to be working on uh, painting the foam and getting that into shape all across the board here, all the way around, it wraps around and uh, actually these two scenes kind of blend together so I'm gonna have to pretty much do everything at once if I'm gonna have it look uh, fairly consistent in um, how I paint the foam and just do it all together so and this is the um, this other scene here I haven't thought of a good name for it Almost inclined, uh, I'm almost inclined to call it the tourist trap scene. Uh, basically, this scene here depicts um, a section of track that's on the outskirts of town, and uh, it's a passing siding here. And there's actually going to be a small um, station here, and this is uh, host to a uh, little excursion company that uh, runs excursion trains up to the top of the uh, mountain scene. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the mountain scene where I've got a little station there and a passing siding. So uh, it's actually supposed to be a park, but uh, this is where the trains are kept and I haven't decided whether I'm going to use, um, have steam engines in there for the excursion trains. That would be kind of fun to kind of work in uh, old time uh, steam trains into a modern layout, so um, that's kind of what I've got going on here. And as you can see, I got a ton of stuff I need to do still up there. So uh, this will definitely keep me busy for the fall and uh, throughout probably the bulk of winter. So uh, anyway, that's. Uh, what I've got up next on my plate, so I will go ahead and get started on that. All right, I'm going to be using today for carving my foam, just my standard tools that I've been using to carve foam on the other section: sure foam rasp, uh, little spatula, fairly putty knife. Sorry, little putty knife here, spatula there. Yeah. And it's an old hacksaw blade for uh, cutting bigger chunks out of foam like that. So.
take the, the roughly cut foam that I glue together and cut out and uh, um, put some, obviously some features in it. Try to um, carve it in such a way that kind of obscures the fact that this has all been layered glued together. And uh, ultimately when I'm done, I'm going to put some spackling in so uh, in between the layers you don't see it. So it kind of hides uh, the fact that there are layers of foam glued together. Let me uh, show you briefly as an illustration on the other part of my layout. Here, I've made these mountains using the same technique, um, gluing together layers of extruded foam and uh, carving them, you know, cutting across the layers so you kind of disguise the fact that they're layers and then use spackling to hide the layers and so. Uh, couple of areas there where you can kind of see it a little bit. It didn't quite cover it up right, but enough of it's uh, been spackled enough and carved to the point where you, know, you can't tell that these are layers of uh, foam um, that have been glued together then carved. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, I'm just in the just doing the rough shaping process here. So, trying to settle on what uh, formations or features my mountains are going to have. So I like that idea. Put that 